God's word remains the only tool for molding, shaping, aligning, and making a man to be like Jesus. God's desire is for everyone to grow into the fullness of the stature of his son Jesus. And this can only be achieved through the undiluted word of God preached in God's own way. Remember, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Sit back and listen to the engrafted word of God that is able to save your soul. May the Lord bless you as you listen and respond positively. You see a stalk is attached to a plant. That is a leaf, but much more than that, they are the organs that take part in what the biologists call photosynthesis, which bring it needed nutrients. You know, they take part in what they call photosynthesis, thereby bringing nutrients onto the plant. They also regulate carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water vapor exchange with the atmosphere. You know, they, 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 they take in the oxygen, take out the carbon dioxide from the, to the atmosphere. And these are some of the things that uh, leaves does, literally speaking. But we want to look beyond that. We want to look at characteristics of leaves. Hello? Uh -huh. What are those attributes of leaves that we can look at from there? We can have an effective insight onto the incident that happened. Leaves are limited in value. True of us. Eh? The value of leaves are very, very limited in capacity. If you carry leaf today and you use it to wrap food because you want to preserve the food, eh? there's a limit time to which that leaves can be a preservation of the food. True of us. Eh? After some time, what happened to the leaf? Start drying up. And if you want to sell leaf let, let's say you you are in the business of uh, of vegetable Abby, uh -huh. you plant vegetable uh, you see when you when you think that you have used a vast land as big as this hall is hmm, to plant your vegetable eh? you will be happy that hey, you have a lot lot of vegetable Abby by the time you harvest it, what the money that comes out of it eh, will be so insignificant. Even compared with the effort that you have put in. Praise the Lord. There was an incident, a folk tale. I think it was a folk tale in my, in my, in my area in those days when we were young. And they told us this, this story. A young man went to the farm and he harvested a particular type of vegetable. I don't know what the name to call it now, but it's a, it's a particular type of vegetable. He harvested in a very big basket eh? and carried it home. And the thing was big. So when he got home, he gave it to the mother and said, Mama, this is the vegetable I have said today. Please cook it for me. Let me go to the farm and farm more. When I come back, I will come and eat. My mom said, that's very good. The mama went to the kitchen, prepared all the other ingredients, and prepared the vegetable for him. So when he was coming back, was coming back to eat, when he got to, he said, mama, where is the vegetable? The mama showed the vegetable in a small pot. Say no. Say all the big vegetables that I harvested today. This is the small something. So you have finished it. Eh, that's what. So all my efforts 
don't bring vegetable. Look at what you are giving me. In anger, he carried a big something and hit it on the mother, and the mother died. So he went back to the farm to go and harvest another vegetable. Bigger than the one that that the, the mother cooked and he thought that the mother ate. And came back home and prepared the vegetable and saw even something smaller than that of the mother. I said, yeah. So this is how this vegetable becomes. I thought it was so mighty when I was bringing it. And what will come out of it will be so much. Look at the whole thing, just small. He was now singing a song. I can't remember that song now. And trying to beg the mother to come back home. And the mother said, no, I'm not coming back. Stay with your vegetable. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can see how vegetable can be. Eh? Big basket, but when you cook it, small value. So vegetable is of a small value in nature. Another thing about vegetable is that the lifespan is very short. Vegetable has a very short lifespan. Praise God. Uh, if some of you have been in the farm, you will understand what I'm talking about. Eh? It's a very, very short lifespan. You cannot say you, are cook, you, are, you plant vegetable that in three years' time you are going to meet it there. Eh? What will happen? Something might have happened to it. So it has a very short life span. So leaves generally have a short life span. Leaves or vegetable is not a major life sustenance. It is not a major life sustenance. What do I mean by that? You cannot sustain life through leaves. Can you? And so, okay, all I will be eating from today is leaf, leaf, leaf. They will ask you, are you an animal? <laughs> For how long can you eat leaf and you will sustain your life? Eh? It's not a major life sustenance. I didn't say it cannot sustain life. That's why I put that word major. It's not a major life sustenance. So, its productivity is what? Limited. Productivity of vegetable or leaves is very, very limited. The leaves are not substitute for fruit. Leaves are not substitute for fruit. You cannot say, oh, if I don't see fruit, let me let me go with leaves. No, they are not major, they are not substitutes. You cannot substitute leaves for fruit. Whereas fruit, you can eat it to to, to, to quench hunger, if you can put it that way. Uh, Fruits can be eaten and can help you to meet the problem of hunger. If you are hungry and you eat fruit, it can take you for two or th for a day and you will not feel hungry. But least has a limited capacity to meet hunger. So if you are hungry, what you'll be going for is not leaves. What are you be going through? What will be going for? Fruits. So leaves has a less nutritional value that can sustain life. Fruits signify productivity, wealth, output, and greatness. Now, you can have a vineyard and rely on that vineyard for your wealth. Truffles. It is true. You can have all your farm to be full of fruits. Might be pineapple fruits or orange fruits 
or or apple fruit and from there you can be a wealthy man true of us it is true cocoa fruit cocoa is a fruit it can bring you wealth but leaves has a limited value of bringing wealth in fact you can hardly be a wealthy person if you deal with leaves leaves has limited value in terms of wealth and leaves are can easily be dried up its attribute is that of smallness it cannot go far so when we now said nothing but leaves nothing but leaves now in Genesis chapter 3 Genesis chapter 3 verse 7 I read and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they so fit leaves together and made themselves apron who are we referring to here Adam and Eve in verse 21 of that same chapter 3 unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them so what's the meaning of that it means that leaf that they use as apron what happened to it that dry off and it has shown their nakedness and God did not want them to be going about naked so God gave them another clothes he brought a skin of animal and made them another apron and cover their nakedness leaves have temporary coverage cannot cover Lord. it cannot preserve life And if we look at First King, First King, Chapter Twenty One, I want to bring out something about leaves and fruits. First King, Chapter Twenty One. Verse, verse 1 and it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Zere had by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria and Ahab, Ahab spake unto Naboth saying Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs because it is near unto my house and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it or if it seems good to thee I will give thee the worth of it in money. Please can you give it to me in uh, NIV NIV Let's have it in NIV. Thank you. I want us to read it together. I have said to Naboth, 
let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden since it is close to my palace in exchange i will give you a better vineyard or if you prefer i will pay you whatever it is worth praise the lord now why did ahab want the vineyard of Nabot? The vineyard of Naboth consists of fruit. Consists of tree that bear fruit. And this man said, it is too close to my palace. The fruit you are bearing is disturbing me. Give me the vineyard. What will he do with the vineyard? He said, I will turn it to what? A vegetable garden. Is that not instructive enough? Somebody had a vineyard that had potential of bearing fruit. And you say, if that man is allowed and the vineyard starts bearing fruit, it is too close to my palace. It will endanger my life. Give me that vineyard. I will turn it into a vegetable garden. Why? Because vegetables doesn't do what? Vegetable has no capacity to do what? To threaten its palace. Vegetable has no capacity to make the king to be uncomfortable. But fruit are that capacity. So what do I want to do? I will collect your vineyard. I will pay any amount. Don't worry about the money. I will pay any amount. As long as that vineyard does not bear fruit that will be an hindrance to my kingdom. Whereas, I will turn that fruit to wheat, to vegetable. As long as it is vegetable, I am comfortable with it. Somebody will be wondering, why are we talking about leaves, leaves now and vegetable? Are we interested in leaf? Are we interested in vegetable? No. We are bringing it to our own life. Can you be that tree that our Lord Jesus Christ came to and is expecting fruit from you only to discover that all over you you possess leaves and when he now look at the leaf he now said I cannot eat anything to quench or to satisfy my hunger from this leaf of what use is this victory when it cannot satisfy me why must he be occupying that space and cannot bear fruit from which I can eat and be satisfied now lay a course from now you will not bear anything again and left and when they came back they find the fig tree dried up the bible says that fig tree is nothing but what leaves why did the bible say nothing but leaves because it has a resemblance of a tree that bear fruit. Hello, I want you to go. I want you to to follow this analogy very well. When our Lord Jesus Christ saw that tree afar off, he saw a tree 
that had the potential to bear fruit. Not so. He saw a tree that once it gets there, this hunger, the problem of hunger will be what? Will be over. He saw a tree that had the resemblance of all other trees that bear fruit. So he was confident. And with that confidence, he went to the tree. To do what? Expecting. Was he expecting from it? Fruit. Is that not the position of most of us? That when we give our life to Christ, we carry this resemblance of a tree that will bear fruit. And when the Lord saw us that we are fellowshipping in an environment, we are doing the work of God, we are appointed as one leader or the other, as workers or the other, and we carry the Bible, and we are studying the Bible. Will the Lord not have an expectation that this one that is having a resemblance of a tree that will produce fruit, I can approach him or her and eat from him? Will it be too much for God to want to approach you with the expectation of eating from your life? Will it be too much? No. Why? Because it is by his grace that you are planted as a tree. And it is by grace that you have the potential to bear fruit. How come that when he gets there, he cannot find any fruit? Such a life we will call it nothing but what? But least. All this that he's doing you know, is what? Nothing but what? But least. As we are here this morning, eh? hundreds of thousands, millions of people are carrying Bible, going to where? Going to church. Millions of ministers, they are on the pulpit, preaching what? Preaching about Christ. Millions of Sunday schools took place this morning. Not so? Good. Will the Lord not be full of expectation that these millions of people that came this Sunday morning denied themselves of all the comforts in their houses, carry the Bible, okay, look so pious, enter the church, participate in praise and worship. Some will be speaking in tongues, jumping up and down. Abi. <laughs> now, all those things we give the resemblance of a tree eh, that our Lord Jesus that we look at and say, Oh, let me approach this, my brother and sister. Perhaps I can eat to quench my hunger. Only for him to now discover that all these ones that have shown is nothing but what? But lives. Nothing but lives. So, what we are saying when we are looking at leaves, when we are looking at fruits, when we are looking at the incident that happened, it has a lot of spiritual implication. First, when a man 
enter into this sheepfold not by the door but through another way eh? that man no matter what he does in this kingdom will be nothing but least John chapter 10 John chapter 10 are we there verily verily I say unto you he that enter not by the door into the sheepfold but climb it up some other way the same is a thief and a robber but he that enter in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep to him the porter open it and the sheep hear his voice and he called his own sheep by name and lead them out and when he puts forth his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice verse 5 and a stranger will they not follow but we flee from him for they know not the voice of what of strangers so what are we saying when a man does not take the right route to God's kingdom anything is doing in that kingdom will be nothing but this and that will bring us back to the beginning of our journey because a lot of people assume that they are Christians and that is a very costly assumption true of us <laughs> a lot of people just assume that they are Christian they never had an encounter with the Lord there was no time they can refer to and say this is the day that I gave my life to Christ some are following people others to the church because they saw others going to the church some were born into the church and because they were born into the church and they grew up in the church they assume they are Christians especially those of our children that we give birth to in the church as parents let us not assume that they are Christians eh? if you assume they are Christian and they are not Christian everything they will do in this kingdom will be nothing but this so everyone for you to enter into this kingdom you must have a definite and specific encounter with the Lord you must enter through the door not through the window a lot of people enter through the window they never go through the door and so if the foundation is faulty what else can a righteous do when the foundation is not properly laid every other thing you put on it will be what? nothing but less that is one specific thing that we must notice what other thing that makes a man to be nothing but less a man without the spirit of God in him will be nothing but least. If you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, 
when the spirit of God does not enter you everything you do will be what? nothing but this and we can see that vividly in the lives of the apostles Let's look at Matthew chapter 17. Matthew 17 verse 14. I read. Fourteen to seventeen. He said, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him, and said, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic, and so vexed. For all times he falleth into the fire, and all time into the water. Verse 16, this is where I'm going. And I brought him to the disciples, and they could not cure him. Praise the Lord. Now, these people are with Jesus, so Abi, eh? They were with Jesus. And this man brought his son that is lunatic to the disciples and they try and try and jump up and jump up and do whatever they know how to do the boy was just looking at them but after the day of Pentecost did any spirit of lunatic have the power to resist them why because the spirit has come. Praise the Lord. Even though our Lord Jesus Christ was with them, eh? they couldn't do much. They can do, but all that they are doing is nothing but lives. But as soon as he left and said, I will say to you a comforter, and the power came on the day of Pentecost. They started bearing fruit. Wasn't was Peter and John that was going, and they just saw that man at the beautiful gate. And the man was looking at them to give them to give him arms. And they fixed their eyes on the man and said, Silver and gold have we known. But such as we have, give eye unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man rose up and walk. Why? Because they now have the spirit in them. So, when a man is empty of the spirit of God, everything will be doing in God's kingdom will be nothing but least. He will be giving a semblance of as if he's doing something spiritual. But can God eat from that life? Nothing but least. See Mark 10. Let's look at Mark 10 and see what is happening there. Among the disciples why the master was still left with them? Mark 10 from verse 35. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we will that thou should do for us whatsoever we shall desire. Verse 36. And he said unto them, what will ye that I should do for you? 37. 
They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, You know not what you ask. Can you dream of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, You shall drink the drink of the cup that I drink of and with the baptism that I am baptized with her shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand or on my left hand is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared for, for to one. This is where I'm going. And when the dead had it, they began to do what? To be much displeased with James and John. What do you get out of that? Even while our Lord Jesus Christ was dead, eh? Somebody said, without consulting others who, they went to our Lord Jesus Christ secretly, do something great for us. That one said, what is it? Let us be one at your right hand, one at your left in your kingdom. When the others now say, eh, so you are the only you know, one, you are so selfish. So you want to be at the right and at the left. Why you leave us alone? And they start disputing among themselves. Why do you think that that happened? Because the spirit of God is not yet inside. Even in relationship, when the spirit of God is not there, everything you be doing will be what? Nothing but least. When a man has not got the spirit of God, when a brother is doing something great, what will happen to that man of man, that supposed man of God, that has no spirit of God? When you see a brother doing something great, what will happen to him? Envy. It is natural to any man to envy another man. True or false? It's a natural thing. If the two of you are doing something and somebody is going above you, it is a natural thing for you to be envious. It is in the nature of man. There is nothing you can do about it. The only thing that can rescue you from such nature is when the spirit of God is inside you. So, when a brother or a sister that have not got the spirit of God inside her or him sees another brother or sister that God is helping to do one or two things, what will happen to him or her? He will be envious. Why? Because that brother or sister is nothing but this. He may give the resemblance of a very violent Christian. But has that brother or sister been crucified? Is that brother or sister full of the Holy Spirit? Does he know the word of God that said a man can receive nothing except that that is given to him from heaven? Does he believe in it? Had the Spirit of God led him to that, that understanding that when a brother is doing something great, it is just a pointer that your own will soon come and you should rejoice with that brother. Nothing but this. So, for us not to be nothing but least, we must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God must be in us. That is the only way that you can obey the commandment of God. God. 
Look, some of us, we come here this morning, Abi, and we are sitting down quietly as perfect gentleman and gentle lady. Abi, but only God knows what has happened at home before you come here. Hello? <laughs> only God knows if the man has insulted his wife before he comes here. Only God knows if the woman has insulted the husband before he comes here. Only God knows. So, whatever you are now doing here is what? Nothing but least. God cannot eat fruits from such life. Nothing but least. So, we need the spirit of God. Hello? We need to release ourselves and ask the power of the Holy Spirit to take over so that what he did on the cross for our sake will not be in vain. We need to be crucified. We need to mortify our flesh. Otherwise, everything we are doing will be nothing but ordinary lease. And you know the attribute of lease. That's why I was telling you all the attribute of lease. You thought that I've become a, a biologist. No. I'm telling you the attribute so that when we get to the spiritual application, you can refer to it. Nothing but least. Another thing we make that will make a man in this kingdom to be nothing but live is that if that man is without the knowledge of his word, everything that man or woman will be doing will be what? Nothing but least. The knowledge of the word of God. You cannot be fruitful without his, the knowledge of his word. You cannot go far without having a rich knowledge of his word, rooted in his word. You must know more about Jesus through what? Through his word. Look, when you will know a Christian that is nothing but lives, eh? it's when you engage that Christian with the scripture. Hello? When a man is doing something, and you are saying, why are you doing this? And he's giving you a reason from his or her head. Eh? You will know this one is nothing but lives. He cannot back it up with the scripture. Why? Because he doesn't even know the scripture. Do you know, sir? And this is very, very unfortunate. That most, some, let me put that some, not most now, some preachers do not even know the word. Hello? They pick part of the word that satisfies their personal needs and they preach it to the people. They don't have a deep understanding of God's word. So when you don't have a deep understanding of his word, everything you are doing will be nothing but less. So God is expecting us to do what? To sit down to have a deeper understanding of his word. Everything about his word is about Jesus. Two of us. The word of God is Jesus in letters. Hello? <laughs> you have Jesus in the spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. And you have Jesus in the letter. That is the word of God. You know he says, so he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was what? 
God. And I said the world created everything and nothing that is created that is not created by the world. And who is the world? Jesus. So, anything you are doing outside the world is nothing but least. So when you see some churches with strange doctrine and you now ask them can you establish it in the world? And they say no, it's not everything that should be in the world. <laughs> then whatever you have done is what? Nothing but least. Everything must be established where? In his word. Another thing that will make a man to be nothing but least is that if that man does not bear his mark, what do you mean by that? Look, every man that does God's work, eh? Is called by God. Hello. Go and make all your research. No man on his own eh, says he wants to serve God. God will be calling you, you'll be resisting, be calling you, you'll be resisting, be calling you, resisting. If you fly back, how many times did they preach to you and you resisted? He said, you did not call me, I call you. You did not choose me, I chose you. You cannot do God's work by calling yourself. Hello? If you call yourself into it, everything you'll be doing will be what? Nothing but least. And God knows, I'm telling the truth. The last thing that will ever come to my mind as I was growing up, even after my university, even after the second degree, is to be a pastor. How can I be a pastor? Hello? It's not, I have never dreamt of it in my life. How can I dream of it? at the background from which I'm, I was coming from. And then I have the grace to be a Christian. What else do I need? Why should I want to be a pastor? In fact, I was in a church that the opportunity opened several times for people to come that want to be a pastor, people that they want to train around the team. God did not call me. So why should I go? It was not an ambition. God's work is not an ambition. Hello? No, it's not an ambition. It's not what... That is why... Look. Don't worry about your children. No. Eh? If God will use them, God will call them. Hello? All you need to do, just be praying for them. Eh? And say, Lord, let your will be done concerning these children. Anyone that God will call among them, no matter what that person does, God will locate him. God will call him. God will draw him. If he's, put, if he's, if he's proven too stubborn, God will break him down. After God breaks him down, he will, will remold him, remold him, and speak to him why he, why he was why he would be in his lowly state. So, when a man calls himself 
and is imposing himself to do God's work, everything that man will be doing will be nothing but least. Because that man will be using his knowledge, using his strength, using his ability, his wisdom, and everything to continue to do God's work. And you know, you cannot help God to do his work. Hello? That was why he struck that man that was helping God to, to make sure that the ark of God did not fall down. What God is telling us is that you cannot help me to do my work. It's my work. If I want to do my work, no matter your level, no matter your state, I will call you. I will panabit you. I will wash you. I will bring strength unto you. And I will use you mightily. Praise the Lord. So, in everything that God has called us to do, in that area of your calling, that is where you bear fruit. Any other area that God did not call you and you impose yourself there, everything you'll be doing will be what? Nothing but least. So you must have that mark of calling. He said, henceforth, let no man trouble you because you bear the mark of our Lord Jesus Christ. You must have that mark of calling. A sign must follow you that will show that you have been called. In Luke 16, 17, he said, this sign must do what? Must follow them that do what? That believed. That is a sign that follow those that believe God. Another thing any man whose life is not in conformity with the nature of Christ is nothing but least. Any man And that word, any man, is very instructive. Whether you are a general overseer, whether you are a bishop, whether you are a pope, whether you are archbishop, any man whose life is not in conformity with the nature of Christ, whatever that man is doing is what? Nothing but this. You have had the testimony of some of our great men of God. Eh? By the time they have a genuine encounter, they start asking themselves, for so many years, what have we been doing? For so many years, we have been preaching, we have been jumping up and down. So, we were doing the wrong thing. For so many years. Why? Because even themselves knows or know they know that that life that they were living is not in conformity with the nature of Christ. So everything that they were doing is what? Nothing but least. Oh. You may be doing God's, you may be doing, you are doing a, a resemblance of God's work. Eh? You may lay hand like this and people will fall all over the place. So. Eh? There may be miracles. So. People will come with which chair and carry it up. Oh. Eh? There will be signs and wonders and miracles. But if your life is not in conformity with Christ's life, everything that man is doing is what? Nothing but least. 
ordinary leaf. And you know the attribute of leaf. It's of no value. It's limited in capacity. It has a very short duration. It cannot sustain life. Nothing but leaves. And there have been so much nothing but leaves in our time. We have seen those we thought they are great men of God. Only to now discover that all these things are nothing but leaves. They can't go far. Nobody can eat any fruit from their life. How can somebody eat something from your life when whatever you are saying is at variance to your lifestyle? Eh? What can you eat from that life? What can you eat, eat from a life that is not in conformity with the word of God? There can be saints and wonder, there can be miracle, there can be anything. There can be crusade of thousands or hundred thousands. But the question is, can our Lord Jesus Christ come into that life and eat fruit from it? Oh, you see people, they say, Anybody that wants to give their life, come. You will see people rushing out. Fine. Is it fruit or nothing but leaves? Did they even know the meaning of giving their life to Christ? Did they know the implication of giving their life to Christ? How come there are so many churches in this country and crime, corruption, evil is at the high side? How come? Does that not suggest that most of the thing that is being done is nothing but this? So many people. We go. There was a time I came to Abuja. I've seen a lot of. I came to Abuja. Even before I start coming to Abuja, I was coming to Abuja and going back. And I came to meet one of my friends. He was in Kubwa. And on Sunday, they said, "Are we? Let's go. Let's go to the church. Let's go to the church." And we carry ourselves to the church. And you know what baffles me that day was that that my friend I know his wife who, and I know another woman that slept with him that night and it was among those of us that carry ourselves to the church and we went to the church together And some other people also went there with their girlfriend together. And we were in the church. And we have a nice time. Everybody was jumping and jumping and jumping. And they left the church. And it was, oh, that pastor, peace so well. We, we, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. I look at them like this. Everything that was done in that church that day, nothing but this. Remember Peter, when he spoke the word, the Bible said the heart of the people caught. And they said, Brother, what shall we do? The word of God does not make a man to feel good. 
Hello? When you start feeling good with the word of God, that word is nothing but least. But when the word of God penetrates, you, you, know, you know the attribute of the word of God? He said the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Penetrating into the dividing of soul and spirit. When the word of God penetrates through your heart, what we come to you is clear. What can I do? It calls for spiritual reassessment of life. But when fornicators, when liars, when evildoers sit under a commission, a message of God and come out laughing and rejoicing. Whatever has been done there is what? Nothing but least. Two things will happen to the word of God that is real. It's so that the recipient say, what can I do? And start looking inward. Eh? Or alternatively, who stand up and is and walk away as a rubbish. Or even carry stones, stone the man of God. Say nonsense. What is he telling us? Those are the two responses that must follow a genuine word of God. It's either you submit unto it or you reject it. You know what they did when they met, uh, when, when, when they were killing uh, Stephen? When Stephen said, Oh, I saw the Son of God standing at the right hand. They said, No, 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 no. We can no longer hear this. What did they do? They carried stone and stone him to death. That is the genuine word of God. When they heard of the, the one from, the, from Peter, they said, Brethren, what shall we do? That's another good response to the word of God. The any word of God that make a man to be rejoicing and be say, Ah, I love that. I love that preaching. It's, it's fantastic. I'm happy. The word of God does not make a man to be happy. It makes a man to reassess him or herself. I told you, each time I have the privilege of listening to my message, I will sit down, I will still be jotting, I will be reassessing my own life with what I preach by myself. I will be reassessing my life. I will be seeing the shortcoming in my life. Nothing but this. So, when we preach the gospel, we preach it fantastically, Abi, but you cannot see it in our life. Eh? What we have done is nothing but this. What we make the word of God to be meaningful to you is if you see what I preach and you see it in my life that is what will make it meaningful to you that is where you can draw and eat from the fruit it is not enough to preach the gospel it is more than important to do what? to live the gospel live a life of the gospel Look, there are some people that when they talk, you don't take them serious again. Why? Because what they talk is different from what they do. I mean, <laughs> we know them. We don't want to mention them. When they say, this is what we are going to do, you wait. Let us wait now. Let us see what he's going to do. He has said it. Let's wait what he's going to do. 
And if for the first time he said one thing, he did another thing. He said one thing, he did another. Whenever he says anything, what does the people say? Now, so they talk now. But we are not of the world. Praise the Lord. Our case must be different from the world. The world can say one thing and do another thing. That is their nature. Their father is called a deceit. Hello? Their father is a deceit. He deceives mankind. So, if they deceive the people, that is their nature. Sure, you know that in public, in public functions, eh? If a politician comes there and say one thing, eh? People will say, "Hold it." That's a political statement. <laughs> Don't take. So you are taking that serious? No, no, no. Hold it. It is when that thing is put into reality that you now believe. Okay, okay. It is true. Yes, they are free to do that. But in this kingdom, any man that his own life is at variance with the nature of Christ, whatever that man is doing is nothing but least. Why? Because nobody can eat from that life. So, as Christians, we must carry the nature of Christ. Before we do anything, we ask ourselves, if Christ has been in this position, what would he have done? He said, not I, but Christ. Not so. So whatever we are doing now is not me that is doing his work, the Christ that is inside me. It is not enough to carry your Bible in the morning and be shouting in your neighborhood so that everybody will know that you are a Christian. Fantastic. But that's your shouting, that's your crying, that's your prayer. Can they relate it with your life? And come out to say, indeed, this is a believer. It is not enough to carry Bible and be doing evangelism all over the place. Fantastic. Wonderful. But can people trace it to your life? If your life is not in conformity with the activities that you are doing in the church, whatever you are doing is what? Nothing but leaves. Ordinary leaf. It doesn't have value. It cannot sustain life. You cannot eat from it. It will soon dry up. So this morning, we are going to pray. I don't want everything I am doing to be nothing but least. I don't want Christ to come into my life only for him to be disappointed and cannot find fruit to eat. I don't want to be under curse. You know, our Lord Jesus, I curse that tree. Why? Because that tree is producing seasonal fruits. Hello? I don't want to be a seasonal fruit producer. Do you know the meaning of that? Oh, at a time, you are very vivant. Everybody is looking at your life and trusting God. Only for some time, you draw seasonal fruits. So, how are you sure that that time that you draw off is not the time that Christ is coming to eat from your life? When a man is not consistent with the law, it will be a seasonal fruit bearer. 
and God cannot eat from that life. I want to be consistent. I don't want to be Today, I am very, very vivant, spirit filled, full of the power of the Holy Spirit, doing great things in God's kingdom. In six months' time, I'm a different thing. When a man has dual nature, dual life, eh? everything that man is doing is what? Nothing but this. One life in the church, another life outside. You know, I told you the, the story of that, that sister, the incident in Lagos years back. The sister was very vivid in the church. One of the best usher in the church. And everybody is sharing testimonial of her life. All of a sudden, they heard that she was assassinated. The fate of everybody in that church dropped. Very big church. And everybody was asking God questions. Why? Why the sister? Reverend sister. Great sister. What else did God want? How can God allow this sister to be killed? And when the general overseer heard, he also, his faith dropped. He also went to the Lord and asked, God, why? God said, go and investigate the death of that sister. So he asked them, investigate her death. And they, inv they investigated and discovered that the sister was having an affair with a man whose family reside abroad. So, she will be coming to have a weekend with the man. And this time around, the assassin was coming for the man. And they enter. And the sister saw them. He has seen us. So, they finish the man. They finish her. Having a dual nature. One life for the church, another life for outside. Nothing but least. Ordinary leaf. Can anybody eat from that life? No. Why? It's not consistent with the Lord. So this year, let not our life be nothing but leaves. Let us be a productive vine in God's kingdom. Let God not be disappointed when he comes to our life only to find nothing but leaves. Let our life be in conformity with the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not serve God with lip service. Let us serve God with what? All our hearts. Let us not be a pretender to his kingdom. Let us be a real worshiper of his kingdom. Let the word of God richly dwell inside us. Let the power of the Holy Spirit feed our life. Let us submit and surrender to the Holy Spirit. Let wife obey God's instruction. Wife, submit to your own husband. Let husband obey God's injunction. Husband, love your wife. If you go against those two, whatever you are doing here is what? Nothing but least. And as you to say, 
don't come and honor me here when you dishonor your husband at home. Such sacrifice or honor is unacceptable unto the Lord. Don't come and show love here when you hate your wife at home. Such love is unacceptable unto the Lord. Let us be children of God. Let's obey God. Let's surrender totally unto his will. Let's not hold on to anything of ourselves. Otherwise, whatever we are doing will be nothing but least. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Shall we rise on our feet? Shall we be on our feet? Shall we talk to the Lord? I don't know which area that God has spoken to you. I know which area he has spoken to me. But will you talk to the Lord and say, Father, I don't want to be nothing but least. I don't want to have a resemblance of somebody that bears fruit only for you to get to my life and find nothing but least. Will you talk to the Lord? Will you ask the Lord for the power of the Holy Spirit to fill you up? That the Spirit of God will dwell richly in your life? That the power of the Holy Ghost will be the one that will be carrying you all over the place? That will not do anything of flesh but by spirit? Will you ask the Lord for the revelation of his word? That God will give you the grace to sit and have quality time eating the word of God. Will you pray that Lord this calling that you have called me I will bear your mark. I will be productive in your kingdom. That your life will be in conformity with the nature of God. That my life will not be at variance with what God is saying. That when the people sit down and they look at the word of God and they look at my life, they can see the correlation. They can see the correlation. They, they will be able to eat for my life. That my life will bear fruit. I will not be nothing but least. Have you discovered your emptiness, nakedness, and helplessness? Do you want Jesus to come into your heart with all his fullness and sweetness? Then pray this prayer genuinely from your heart. Lord Jesus, I have hitherto followed my own ways. I am a sinner worthy of death, but you die that I might be saved. Lord Jesus, forgive me and have mercy on me. Come into my heart and take your place. Today, I surrender my life unto you as my personal Lord and Savior. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you have genuinely said this prayer, you are now a child of God. Thank you for watching and listening to today's message. We hope you've been blessed by today's message. For inquiries and counseling, please call 0803-314-2266-081-254-04068-0803-599-5034 or like our Facebook page on www.facebook.com slash Chapel of Redemption International Ministries. You can watch, listen, or download our messages on www.youtube.com slash Chapel of Redemption International Ministries. Chapel of Redemption International Ministries. Jesus only is our message.